As sports fans across the land salute a retiring legend of football, the league he exits has just been slapped with a lawsuit containing allegations that, if proved, could shake the very foundation of the NFL and some of its most storied franchises. The accusation on the first day of Black History Month, systemic racism in the NFL, and specifically racism in hiring. The target, the NFL, the Miami Dolphins, the Denver Broncos, and the New York Giants, plus what the suit calls John Doe teams, number one to 29, in other words, all of them, indicating he hopes others will join to form a class action suit. The man filing it, the former head coach of the Dolphins, Brian Flores, the suit says Mr. Flores has determined that the only way to effectuate real change is through the courts, where the NFL's conduct can be judged by a jury of Mr. Flores' peers, a judgment that is long overdue. The 58-page document filed late this afternoon in the Southern District of New York, shock full of explosive allegations, among them discrimination in Coach Flores' interview process with the Broncos and the Giants and in his termination from the Dolphins just last month. Further, he says, the Miami owner, Stephen Ross, wanted him to lose games on purpose so that the Dolphins could get the number one draft pick. That owner, Ross, offered Coach Flores $100,000 per loss. But Flores says, as his team instead racked up wins late in the 19 season, the Dolphins' general manager told him the owner's mad that the team is winning. The Dolphins released a statement denying the allegations. Flores alleges the Giants scheduled a sham interview with him to comply with what's known as the Rooney Rule, a requirement that teams interview minority candidates for big jobs. He offers as proof a text message that he says he got from his former boss, the Patriots coach, Bill Belichick, in which he says Belichick mistakenly congratulated him for getting the head coach job with the Giants. Brian Flores hadn't yet been interviewed. Brian Dable had. Later, Coach Flores says he received from Belichick another text. Sorry, I effed this up. I double-checked and misread the text. I think they're naming Brian Dable. I'm sorry about that, BB. Brian Dable did get the job. The Giants issued a statement saying Flores was in the conversation to be the head coach until the 11th hour and that they hired the individual they felt was most qualified. Flores also says the Broncos put him through a similar sham interview three years ago and that they never had any intention of considering him for the job. The Broncos hired Vic Fangio shortly after Flores' interview. Denver released a statement calling the allegations baseless and blatantly false and saying they'll vigorously defend the integrity and values of the Broncos organization and its employees. Coach Brian Flores released his own statement saying... In making the decision to file the class action complaint today, I understand that I may be risking coaching the game that I love, and that has done so much for my family and me. My sincere hope is that by standing up against systemic racism in the NFL, others will join me to ensure that positive change is made for generations to come. The NFL just released a statement, too, saying, the NFL and our clubs are deeply committed to ensuring equi equitable employment practices and continue to make progress in providing equitable opportunities throughout our organizations. Diversity is core to everything we do, the NFL wrote, and there are a few issues on which our clubs and our internal leadership teams spend more time. We will defend against these claims, which are without merit. Bill Roden now, columnist for ESPN's The Undefeated. Bill, race in the NFL has been a topic of conversation for years and years. What impact might this lawsuit make? Well, well, this is going to be very explosive. Um, you know, in, in doing this, uh, Brian Flores becomes the Colin Kaepernick of black coaches. Wow. And uh, it, it's possible he may suffer the same consequences, as he just said, that, uh, you know, the NFL may do to him what they've done to Kaepernick. Not if he gets a lot of support and right out of the gate, will he? Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's he's really putting his... his uh, uh, his career at risk. But, you know, the, the, the NFL's problem, you know, is not race, but it's racism. And we've been talking about this for decades, decades and decades and decades. Uh, the sham interviews, um, you know, people knowing who they're going to hire and, and, and putting uh, black candidates through this sham. We go from, you know, one black head coach 
to maybe as many as eight, then back to four, then two. It's basically been a merry-go-round. And the and the great thing about this is that, you know, the, the, the NFL does not do anything unless it's forced to do it. I mean, the days of, of the moral high ground are gone. The, the NFL uh, is only going to do things uh, if it's embarrassed mm. or if it's taken to court. And that's that's the great thing about this suit in that we're done with the uh, relying on your good intentions. Mm. We're basically going to go to court. R Roden, a, a portion of this lawsuit shows a photo of the current NFL coaches. Look at this. It points out there is but one current black coach out of the 32 teams, Pittsburgh, of course. Is the system just broken? Well, it's beyond broken. I mean, I think to say that it's broken means that it, that it, that it ever worked. And it, 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 it has not worked. Um, it has not worked for, it's, it's worked for black players on the field. You know, the NFL has, you know, since it, since it reintegrated in 1948, uh, it's been happy to, uh, you know, to, to, to hire black players. But it's, you know, you see the 70% of players are black. But, but the idea of hiring blacks to be head coaches and executives uh, continues to be uh, a blind spot for the NFL. It's still this old boys network where people, these owners, hire people who look like them, people they feel, quote, unquote, comfortable with. And the only way this is going to end is for bold actions like this when you basically take these owners uh, to court and put this out in public. And the great thing is that this is all hitting the fan as we're heading to L.A. for the Super Bowl. Bill Roden will watch it and report on it. Thank you.